All right, Rock Addicts, this is DJ Rem from Rock Addict Radio, and I have Steve from the band Kill Ritual on the line. How you doing, man? Good. How you doing? Not too bad. Not too bad at all. I have to tell you, Rock and Grawl, thank you to them for uh, sending your tracks to me. I've been playing them on my shows, and actually I have you guys in the 24-7 stream, so everybody's digging on you guys big time. Oh, right on, man. Appreciate it. Thank you. So... If you can go ahead and start and introduce yourself and the other members of the band and what everybody's spots are, that'd be great. Uh, myself, I'm, I'm Steve Rice, uh, uh, lead guitarist, um, formerly of uh, the band of Magica. We also have in the band uh, Wayne DeVecchi, uh, who was uh, who's the drummer who also, also used to be in a Magica uh, towards the end of the band. And then we have uh, Roberto Poretti, uh, who is on rhythm guitar, uh, and he's formerly of the band Eldritch, which uh, was a European uh, Italian band. And then we have on bass, we have Daniel Williams. Uh, he was the bassist uh, for Dark Angel for their uh, reunion that lasted about three or four years. And then when, uh, on vocals, we have uh, Josh Crimson Gibson, who's uh, he's really not been in you know, uh, any kind of name band, but he's uh, been a Bay Area vocalist for, uh, you know, for a while, so we know. So, how long have you guys all been together as a group, and what kind of got things started for you? Um, the band's been together for about two years, so the band started in uh, the end of 2010. Uh, basically, what happened is that um, Wayne, Wayne and myself, uh, as I mentioned, we were in the band of Magica, and that band uh, dissolved uh, in 2010 and came to an end. When the band came to an end, we decided to, uh, just, you know, just to form a new project because towards the end of the band we had been working on some some new material so we decided to take some of that uh, new material we had been working on and see if we could put together a new project and um, and then we just started to you know just start the process of shopping for people you know you know through blogs online whatever and uh, we're able to get in, come into contact with uh, the rest of the guys and it just so happens that when we came in contact with the rest of the guys some of the other guys had also been in bands that you know people might recognize and know who they are so it just worked out that way. It was just kind of fate. It was nothing uh, special way where we went hunting for certain people. We just kind of let it, you know, uh, come together on its own. Uh, and the, the probably the, the big, uh, you know, key on that was Josh on the vocals. He kind of came into it. I was not knowing who he was really as far as what he'd done and stuff in the past. He really wasn't, you know, like the super metal guy or anything like that. His, he was always more into, I don't know, like, probably did stuff more like hard rock, just, just stuff a little bit more on that end of the spectrum. So, but he wanted to try to go in a heavier direction, you know, kind of take his voice that he has and bring it into it. And it, uh, and it worked out well. So, you know, I mean, he's, you know, he's got the, he's got the a, a kind of a different style than, you know, that uh, maybe what might be pop right now, but it's, you know, that it kind of harkens back to the days of some older metal styles. Yeah, the, the, his vocals are killer. I'll, I'll agree with that. Yeah, it's, it's, just, it's one of those things that, you know, some people, when they, when they, when they, you know, the, 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 some people that don't like those kind of vocals said that's, you know, that was that was the negative, you know, aspect. But I, you know, I totally disagree because I think it kind of gives us a, gives us a little bit of a unique sound because we don't really sound like everybody right now. Well, and that's what's so cool about you guys because obviously, I mean, you know, there's, you know, there's a thousand bands out there trying to trying to do something, and right. you definitely have to be unique these days because if you just sound like everybody else, you kind of get lost in the crowd. If you know what I mean. Yeah, I mean, it's, you know, you could, I, you know, for me, it's like, you know, you can, you can only go, you know, so, so much in one direction, so heavy. Everybody's trying to out heavy each other and all that kind of stuff. And you know, I understand. I mean, I, it's enjoyable to a point, but then it becomes like you, like you said, it's just, you know, there's thousands of bands doing the same kind of styles, all trying to, you know, take the same, a similar approach, and it's, and it's really difficult, like you know, like you were saying, to, you know, to separate yourself from the pack. So, right, that was our intention. Very, very cool. So, what is going on with you guys right now? What do you guys have like lined up for shows and stuff? Uh, right now, we, uh, it was it was it was inter interesting because when we we had the record done for a while, and we were shopping around with a uh, while with, with our management, management rock and growl. So, by the time we got the the deal with Scarlet and put the in and had a release date for the record, we had a couple things that that, that were coming up, you know, for the guys personally. So. I mean, our uh, our guitar Roberto. He, he just had a baby like, like two days ago with his wife, his first child. Um, our bass player got married, so we had all these things that were ha happening within a couple <laughs> couple weeks of each other. Yeah, the record came, the record came out, so we kind of had to you know reschedule some of our ideas about when we went about playing tour and stuff like that. It looks like we're going to be doing some uh, 
some uh, U.S. terrain here in March, so we're going to be doing about three or four weeks with the dates, and um, so that's the uh, that's the thing on the immediate schedule. And, and since we had so much time uh, between the time we finished the record and the time we got started CD number two, which we're about halfway through, so that should uh, that should be done probably about May. Or so we'll have another record ready to go. We'll see when we get a release date on that. Okay. Well, very cool. So. Speaking of the, you know the current album, where did you guys record this at? Uh, the, we recorded the, uh, the 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 album at uh, at my home studio, and then there's a, a local studio that uh, of a friend of ours where we did all the drum tracking at. And then once we got all the the basic recordings done, then we took it uh, over to um, Andy LaRock La Studio, Sonic Train Studios in uh, in Sweden, and had him mix it. Um, I've known Andy for years because he's worked on some, you know, some previous Imagine. I had a pretty good working relationship with him, so anytime I need, you know, the, you know, the records, I don't really like to mix my own stuff, you know, because it's kind of hard to be objective. So right, we we, we like to work with him on on that aspect. So we, we kind of uh, we brought it over there and had him uh, mix it, and, and it's uh, it, it is what it is. So who um. In, in uh, along those same lines with the album, the the album cover is amazing. I totally dig it. Who um who designed that for you guys? Uh, that's a, a guy uh, from uh, uh, an artist from Brazil. His name is Jober Melo, and uh, he's um, he's done a lot of work for for tons of people. He has his own company called Sledgehammer Graphics, and he's uh, done a lot of stuff for the for uh, band Pop Pop versus a uh, Sabaton, uh, the Swedish. Power metal band. Very familiar with them, yes. Yeah, so he's he's done all their all their stuff for them. Also, he's done work with Bad Company. He's done work with uh, uh, numerous metal bands. I mean, ourselves. He's uh, he just is this really really good uh, artist from Brazil that um, happens to do you know mainly work in the in the rock and metal field. So he's uh, yeah he's a really good guy. So I mean, how did that work for you guys? Did you guys kind of give him a concept and say, "Here, run with it"? Did you just give him the the CD and say, "Listen to the music and come up with something"? I mean, how did you guys do that? Well, I came, I came in contact with him originally when um, when Magica was putting together uh, a website. So I had him do the the website work, and 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 then I seen all the you know the ideas he has for <clears throat> you know album covers and stuff he's done in the past. So basically, all we really did, I said, "Hey, here's the title of the record. Here's here's the tracks to listen to." To get the vibe off of it, and uh, just do what do what you want, and then uh, and he, that's what he came up with. I didn't really give him any direction. I just gave him a title, and kind of told him, you know, um, you know, we we didn't want anything too, you know, um, you know, gory. We didn't, you know, we didn't want anything that was, you know, didn't fit really fit the band's image. And he just, you know, I think came up with a really cool concept. Yeah, and, and not to beat it to death, but I, I just, you know, I always, I always make a try to make a focus with the bands uh, with the with the artwork they do for the cover because you know today's age a lot of bands just like to put a picture of themselves on the cover and a lot of bands are starting to finally come back around and start to put put some effort into that cover and make it you know where it's actually art and I just as a fan I truly appreciate that so yeah I think it's I mean I think it's important I think you know Imagery obviously has, you know, it has an important tie to, you know, the music and, and especially metal because people have certain images about what what the music, you know, is uh, is about. So I think it's, you know, it's important to kind of tie the two together, you know. And as long as, the, as, long as it, it, they kind of go hand in hand and it looks natural, then I think it's uh, I think it's great. But I, I know what you're saying because, you know, if some, some bands just don't want to put the effort into that because they're, cause they're thinking nobody's really going to care. But, you know, people do care because the image goes beyond just the CD cover. It kind of like personifies the band, so. Yep, exactly. So, what? Uh, this is this is just more of a question, just for you. What what got you into music? What kind of influences did you have growing up that made you want to do something like this? For me, it was just. Uh, yeah, I think it was my, my real interest came into uh, came into guitar because you know just obviously you know hearing stuff you know when I was younger on the radio, music and stuff like that. But probably the you know for me it was all about when I first really got into uh, wanting to play music is when I saw Kiss, you know, on, on television. I can't, I think I saw them on a commercial for a concert they were playing or whatever, and I just saw the imagery and the whole the whole thing about Kiss that really sparked my interest. I had already been kind of into music by then. I was kind of listening to, like, really, uh, liked Elton John a lot. I liked, um, uh, you know, the typical stuff that was, you know, maybe little, not really metal, but Kiss is the really thing that's all, you know, solidified it for me. So once I got into Kiss and it was, Luckily, my dad had 
had a guitar stashed away in the attic that he bought when he was younger, but never learned how to play. He had a guitar and an amp, so I was able to get my hands on it pretty quickly, and uh, and it just took off from there. Very cool. You you answer my next question. I was going to ask you if you had any other influences family wise and your dad. So because he yeah, had the I guitar, mean, cool. Never, he never really learned how to play. He just he just had an idea that he wanted to play. He bought he bought the stuff. Like, was, I wish I probably still had the stuff now because he bought it like in a you know in a pawn shop in the fifties when he was a kid. Never uh-huh. played it and and then uh, you know just kind of let it set up there. And, you know it was a crappy guitar. You know the, you know the typical story. You know the strings forty feet off the neck and all that kind of crap, but. It didn't matter. It all worked. It plugged in and made noise. So I was happy. Right, yeah. And it gave you that first start. So that's a, that's yeah. very cool. So what? Uh, how did you guys come up with Kill Ritual for the name of the band? I, this is the one thing I, I always say. You know, it's like for us, coming up with the name of the band was the hardest thing to do. I mean, writing the songs, getting the band together. We're hurt, it, that was easy <laughs> compared to coming up with the name for the band. Because it was one of those things that... We just got, wow, you know, there's just so many, you know, metal bands out there with so many different names, and how do we make this, you know, work with, you know, where it doesn't sound too, you know, death metal, or it doesn't sound too power, you know, try to find a middle ground for the kind of music that we thought we were playing. And I think we just played, I, I really believe it was, if I remember correctly, it was just, we did, we started just, you know, doing a word combo game or something like that. People just throwing words together, coming up with ideas, and and just throwing them out there, and just and Kill Ritual was one of the ones that just, I think the guys, you know, put together, we kind of said, hey, this could work, you know, we, we kind of like it, it's, you know, maybe it's, uh, you know, we, at first we were worried it might be a little bit too, you know, uh, death metal-y if we thought, we, you know, because it kind of going that direction, people get the wrong idea, but, you know, for all intents and purposes, I think it was, uh, name's okay, because, you know, it can mean different things to different people, so, um, you know, we just, just basically just, you know, said, hey, you know, that's, okay, if everybody agrees we like this one, let's just go with it and, and make it, make it work. That's how it, how it happened. Nice, yeah. It, it definitely sounds metal, so it works. <laughs> yeah, I mean, we wanted something that sounded metal, and we don't, you know. But it's, it, it, I mean, I, you know, I mean, because you know, obviously, you know, you talk to a lot of different bands. There's just, just so many bands out there. There's so many names. You just, it was really hard finding something that wasn't, you know, being used in some form or another. Yep, definitely. Yeah. So, what kind of um, have you had to make a lot of personal sacrifices to keep doing this and, 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 and to keep moving forward with this whole this whole metal thing? I mean, has it been tough? You know, I've, I spent you know I spent a, a long time with you know my previous band in Magic. You know, I mean, we put out I think we ended up putting out what six or seven records I think, and you know and that was a long time to be in that band and basically be an underground band the whole time. You know, and and, and nothing really. Nothing really got beyond a certain level of that band. We kind of started off at one level and kind of brought it up and got a little more recognition. So, you know, it was it was always, you know, tough to... Probably the toughest part, it's not really, it's the sacrifice of our, our time and stuff. Like that. It's just, the, the you know, the sacrifice of having to, you know, figure out how you're going to make records and make them happen and, you know, taking care of the business end of things and making sure you get out there and, and able to get some kind of exposure, play for people and stuff. Because it is, you know, super competitive. If, if you're not, and if you're not one of the, you know, the bands that gets on maybe one of the more, you know, larger labels that are going to give you a lot of support, it's going to be a lot more in your, in your uh, arena to, you know, to make it happen, so you have to take on a lot more personal, you know, um, effort to make, to make things work, so that's probably the biggest sacrifice, is just, you know, a sacrifice of, you know, time and, 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 you know, personal money, and, but, you know, it's, once you kind of get into this thing, you kind of get it rolling, and you do get the, you know, some, you know, some good, you know, some positive feedback when you're, in a band, you get people that enjoy the stuff. It's it's really the thing that feeds it because you then because then, then you're motivated to to move on, not even worried about you know the other, other aspects because you know people enjoy it. It's, it's nice to you know for people to hear your music and enjoy it. Yep, definitely. So, where's a good place for people to find out more about you guys? What kind of social networking sites do you guys use? Uh, we use them all. So, I mean. Uh, Facebook, you can get, hit us up Facebook. You can actually, you know, connect to uh, the the main place to probably hit us up is, a, is at our website, as well as just killritual dot com, and you can hit all the other social media uh, places. Uh, uh, hit us up through it, through there, no problem. Messages there, so it's probably just best to go to our main website. It has all the current information and all the, uh, the and, you know links to reviews and merch and whatever. Okay. And so is the website the best place that people want to buy the album? Is that a good place for them to go? Yeah, to yeah, we have we have the albums. We have you know we have all the, all the merch and stuff. So that's a, that's a great place to go to. Or you know our album, you know it's also it's you know the the label we're uh, on is 
they got great uh, distribution, so you can go basically anywhere and buy a record. So it's, you can go on Best Buy, you can go on Amazon, um, Kmart, whatever, whatever you prefer as far as you know buying your music, it's, it's available. Very cool. And then I have to ask, how has it been uh, working with Rock and Grawl? Has that been a pretty good experience? Yeah, Axel's a great guy. I mean, Axel's you know he's uh, you know it was. He was, he was definitely a key element, you know, in, in, in taking the, you know, the project to the next step. I mean, the, one of the things that was important to me when we had this, put this new band together, that, uh, you, know, you know, learning from the mistakes of my, you know, previous, you know, work is that, you know, we need this, you know, management right away to help us, you know, keep this, this thing, the, you know, the ship right. So, so one of the first things that we did before we even, like, you know, um, you know, started, you know, hunting the record, shopping the record on stuff, it was, was to find management. So I was able to hook up with the, Axel and get him on board with us, and uh, it's made you know it made a big difference because he's um, you know not only is he, you know he, he he helps promote his, promote his artists that he deals with, but you know he's um, he's you know he's a real you know dedicated to um, you know the bands that he's um, you know carrying. So it's it's, it's, it's been a good, a good effort. Excellent. Yeah, I've I've been dealing with Axel for a couple of years now, and he uh, he he's he's a killer dude. He uh, I know he's he's done me very well with sending me bands and just hooking me up with with different. Uh, artists and stuff so good props to him he, he's got he's got a he's got a really good roster on his uh going to you know i mean he's got yeah. some great bands on there with some, some really good music so i mean he's he's got a lot of good people involved in the I, and i've seen his you know his uh you know the you know the fruits of his effort he's getting he's getting a lot more you know a lot more bands that are you know good stature on there and he's, and he's you know spreading the word it's good yeah have you listened to empires of eden yeah i have yeah yeah those guys very killer. Yeah, a of, he's got a lot of good bands on there. What, what other band I would really like that he has on there? Um, uh, uh, Fury on those guys are really good. Uh-huh, definitely. Uh definitely. Yeah, kind of you know, and and um, what was the other band on there? Well, his uh, the guy that he's works with a lot, the guy from uh, Raven Lord. Those guys are really good too. Yep. So, so he's got yeah, he's got a lot of good releases coming out this this uh, next next couple of months. So uh, back to you guys. What what is your guy? What are your goals for this band? Where do you guys hope to be in a couple of years with this? Uh, I guess in a couple of years we hope to be, you know, doing a little bit more. Uh, you know, obviously we want to, you know, obviously we're going to continue making music because we already have a, you know, the new record almost done. So that'll take us through for a good couple of years. But you know, just you know, obviously just touring more. So it's just kind of like. Establishing the band uh, right now and getting the getting the name out there. Like I mentioned, we'll be doing some, you know, some touring in March, and then uh, you know just keep progressing forward with that. I mean, the, the next probably push would would logical push would be to is to get over to Europe and do some dates too. So we're going to concentrate on getting some U.S. dates out of the way, and then hopefully that'll um, you know roll into uh, next year for Europe. Yep. Very good. Well, good luck with that. Yep. Okay. This this is another question just for you specifically. If if I grabbed your iPod or your MP3 player, however you like to listen to music, what bands would I find you listening to right now? <laughs> probably, uh, let's see, probably what was ever loaded on there before. <laughs> I want I want those kind of people that if I if I'm not in my car, uh, I don't really listen to music. <laughs> and if I do listen, to, and if I do listen to music, I'll probably pull up some old stuff. But for me, it's probably going to be you know basically about the old school because it's just. If I was to probably, it would probably be you know all the classics, you know, you know Priest, Maiden, that kind of stuff. Maybe uh, stuff that's a little bit more obscure. Maybe stuff like Corner, uh, new bands I like. I like uh, Gojira a lot. Um, uh, there's you know I don't know. It's just kind of I'm more of a I'm at the point now where I I mainly just concentrate on on my own music so much that I by the time I get done working on my own music, I really don't listen to that much music anymore. So it's it's one of those one of those things. All right, fair enough, fair enough. I, I listen to so many different bands, I can't even tell, I can't even keep track. Yeah, I know, so, I mean, for, you know, for me, it's, that's just the way, you know, it's been, I mean, I used to be really, you know, into music, you know, when I was younger, you listen to tons and tons of bands, and I have, I have quite a vinyl collection, I mean, just really obscure stuff, and, but, you know, now it's just got to the point now where, you know, I, I put so much effort in writing my own music and, and doing that, that uh, it just takes away from the, the listening aspect. Yeah, I hear you. Very- so what do you guys do to relax? What do you do when you're not uh, practicing and writing music and all this stuff? What do you do to just kind of unwind and chill? Uh, I, I, for me, I mean, I just you know I have my I have my family, my kids. So if I'm not doing the you know the musical thing, then I'm you know usually spending time with the family. So um, that and uh, you know the other guys in the band, and uh, I know that our, our drummer Wayne he does a lot of fishing. Um, 
I know that uh, you know the guitar player Roberto, being that he's Italian from Italy and stuff like that, his his main thing he likes to do is cook. So, and I and I also like to cook also. Uh, but uh, and then our bass player Daniel, he's uh, he's really into art and stuff like that. So I know he did, he does a lot of. Uh, you know, drawing and painting and, and things of that nature because that's kind of the field he works. He works in the art field. So it's, um, well, that's basically, you know, with you. Josh, you know, I don't, I, don't, I don't know what Josh does at half the time, you know. Maybe maybe runs around trying to pick up chicks. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> he's at the club. <laughs> <laughs> you know, he doesn't, he doesn't drink, so I don't think he's out drinking, so I think he's just cruising. I don't know. <laughs> that's funny. Very cool. Okay. So what uh, what sets you guys apart from all those other bands like we mentioned earlier that are out there trying to do something? Why should people listen to you guys? Well, I think for I think that the thing that, that we that we bring to it is that we obviously you know have the you know our our lineage and you know influences from the past. You can definitely hear that in our sound because you know we're, we're bringing some of the old school back into this our sound. But we also you know made a, also have a conscious effort you know trying to keep it you know somewhat modern too because. You know, we want a modern production. We use, you know, use modern instrumentation because we play a lot of seven-string stuff, you know, down to So it has that heaviness of of some of the modern music, but it has the riffing style and writing style of some of the old-school music. And then we, obviously, we have, you know, a, a vocalist that can, you know, he can pretty much do a lot of a different things vocally. So we have, you know, kind of a, kind of a sound that, you know, that uh, is, is, you know, somewhat, you know, <clears throat> straight ahead and kind of commercial, but it's also, you know, Still metal and still heavy, and you know, with uh, just good songwriting. We're just, you know, that's our main goal is just, you know, to write the best songs possible. Whatever it ends up sounding like, we'll we'll roll with it as long as it, uh, you know, it fits the format. Okay, well, I'm going to tell everybody that's that listens that's going to listen to this interview to definitely check these guys out because they totally shred and rock. And, uh, yeah, you will not be disappointed. And you can always come to Rock Addict Radio and uh, tune in or request Kill Ritual, and you will get to hear them that way as well. So what's the craziest thing that's ever happened to you at a live show that you're willing to share? Craziest thing on a live show? Let me think, let me think about this one. I don't know. Let me think. I think, I think, I think, I think some personally I've had, well, probably the craziest thing I ever did at a live show was, was, was take my guitar and smash it and throw it in a garbage can on the side of the stage. <laughs> nice. <laughs> <laughs> well, we, that was only because we had, uh, finished a, we had finished playing the show in, in Arizona and, and Phoenix where it was like hotter than hell and we ended up going and playing in Hollywood the next day and to, to, to just to, to traveling on the guitar when I got the guitar on stage I thought it was in tune it wasn't but so I just took it and smashed it and threw it in the garbage can <laughs> but that was that was fun I know we've had not a lot of crazy stuff happen to, you know to us when we played it was mainly you know just you know, either get knocked out, but you know, have the singer hit you in the head with a microphone, and just crazy stuff like that. But nothing with you know fan base. So, all right, that's good. But sometimes I ask that question, and people tell me they almost have like a Lamb of God moment where they, you know, people rush in the stage and they're throwing people right, right. back into the crowd, and so you never know. Yeah, yeah, no, I, yeah. I mean that. I mean that whole that whole thing. I can't, you know, I, as I, you know, find more about that whole thing with Randy. It's just unbelievable that poor guy's having to go through all that shit for basically. With, was nothing that was his fault. So. Yeah, protecting himself, crazy. I mean, if you see, if you see the footage, I mean, he, he he didn't even really even throw the dude. He just kind of just took the dude and just threw him off stage. You know, just pushed him off stage. He was just trying to keep people off him. I mean, uh, right. It's pretty sad. Okay, so who in the band is the biggest prankster? Is there somebody that likes to pull out of pranks on you guys? Oh. Uh, Probably the guy that's going to probably cause the most havoc. That's always me. So I'm, I'm <laughs> uh, the jokester of the band. So I'll, 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 I'm always up to something. All right. <laughs> well, I don't, we don't have to worry about anybody in the band disagreeing since you're <laughs> calling yourself out, right? Yeah, yeah, no, yeah. I'm, 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 the, I'm the one that's probably going to be, uh, you know, causing the, the, the. I'm always the one that's uh, the comedic relief of the band. So you know, is uh, <clears throat> causing the most problems. Okay. And then along those same lines, who uh, who in the band spends the most time in front of a mirror getting ready for a show? Is there anybody, any any pretty boys in the band? Uh, that would definitely be the drummer. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, he's, probably, he's probably the last person who would do that. You know, I, no, that is not, I don't think there's any pretty boys in the band. I mean, I, I mean, I mean, our other guitar player, Roberto Bean, he's Italian, he's from the, and he's from, uh, the, you know, maybe uh, fashion conscious. <laughs> 
place like Italy, maybe he grooms his goatee a little bit longer. He probably should, but no, I think everybody's pretty uh, pretty unconcerned about their image. <laughs> ah, that's cool. All right. Anything else you would like to tell the world and everyone that will listen to this interview, That anything that I haven't asked you, you want to make sure people know about you or the band? Uh, I just would you know, like to say, hey, you know, thanks for uh, you know, giving us an opportunity to, uh, to you know, expose the band. Uh, you know, and thank you to those people that have listened to us already and enjoy it. Hey, you know, there's more to come, and, uh, and we hope to see you guys uh, on the road uh, here soon, and we'll... We'll be around for a while, so just keep a lookout for us. And hey, you know, and, uh, you know, give us a listen, and hopefully you'll enjoy it. Um, I think we covered everything else pretty well. Okay, very good. Well, I appreciate you uh, taking the time to uh, to, t- to talk and uh, to BS about this stuff. And yeah, make sure you tell the whole band I said hello. I'd appreciate that. Sure, sure, no problem. And the last thing I'd like to ask you to do is, if you wouldn't mind making a couple uh, radio tags for me. Oh, no problem. So the first one, you know, you can just say, you can say your name and say that, you know, your name and you're from Kill Ritual and that you're listening to DJ Rem at rockaddictradio.com. All right, this is uh, Steve Rice from Kill Ritual, and you're listening to DJ Rem on Rock Addict Radio. Perfect, and then the second one, the same thing, but just leave me out just a generic station tag for the other DJs. This is uh, Steve Rice from Kill Ritual. And you're rocking with Rock Attic Radio. Very cool, man. Totally appreciate that. I'll, I'll get that sent out to the other DJs. So. Sure. Sounds great, man. Sure. Sounds great, man. So, Okay, well, thanks again, and you have a great day. You too. All right. Take care. Bye. Yep, bye. bye.